Hi, welcome back. This is lesson zero, how big is an empty sketch anyway? So I'm going to open up um, the sketch that I've already prepared here. Now you'll see in here that I do have something in the sketch. It's just all pretty much commented out. I'm not going to teach you about what a sketch is necessarily because I'm assuming that you've already done a little bit of playing with the Arduino IDE. Um, I'm using the Arduino 1.05 R2 IDE. I suggest you download the one that I'm using if you're going to follow through these just in case there are any nuances that um, might bite you if you're not using the latest version. So how big is an empty sketch anyway? What is this about? Well, before you even do anything with a sketch, and if you just compile an empty program, it's going to take up a certain amount of space. You only have 32K of RAM on an Arduino Uno with the AT Mega 328, and you only have 2K bytes of RAM, SRAM, static RAM, which is used for your variables, your stack, um, anything dynamically for strings and buffers and all these kind of things. You only have 2K to play with. That's not a huge amount. Now, this very first sketch is not going to show you how much RAM is free because it really doesn't do anything. But I want to just show you that before we even start doing anything, um, and even an empty program will consume a certain amount of RAM, and it's more than you think. So what I have here, this first thing right here, this is a start of a comment block. So a slash star will just let me make a bunch of lines of comments without having to put slash slash in front of everything. Okay, so this is just an intro. I suggest that whenever you're running programs, you follow something similar where you have an introduction to what the sketch is, what it does, any additional information that might help when you created it, and things like that. Okay, that's all I'm going to say for that. So if we scroll down this sketch a little bit, um, what we've got here is a couple of defines. Um, now, I use defines for setting up constant variables wherever I can because they don't actually consume anything until they're actually used in the code somewhere else. So this statement about saying if define, sorry, hash define debug one, it sets up something for the compiler, but that's all it does. It doesn't actually become part of the code base and not at this point anyway. Um, same as define serial buffer size 50. You'll see when we get to lesson one that um, this will actually have some relevance. For now, I'm going to just skip over it. I also like to put comments at the beginning and at the end of each specific block of something that's in my sketch. So here I put a bunch of constants in the form of definitions and then end of constants. Um, I've got some real variables which will be declared in the net sketch. I've just left them commented out for the moment just so you can see. And I'm going to show you something in a second that shows that comments do not take up space. Okay. So the very first thing I've left in is the void setup. There are two very specific loops that with the Arduino IDE or at least the compiled code needs to have. Um, the bootstrap loader that's built into the Arduino Uno and other Arduinos will call setup first when you power it up. And this is the area where you will initialize any specific variables, any specific libraries. For instance, the one that's actually here commented out right now initializes the serial port library to work at 9600 board. The next loop, which has everything commented out, is the main loop that is called once the setup has completed and returned. Um, this void loop is called repeatedly from the parent program, um, the underlying program, and it will keep calling this again and again and again. So you don't actually have to put a while brackets one in here because right outside of this loop, there already is one. So why waste the program space when it's already there and already being done? All right, so you can get right into it and start doing your programming. Um, the next thing I've got is there's a whole bunch of code here that is all commented out so that it doesn't take up any space. So this basically is the absolute minimal sketch you could create and still be valid. It's got the setup, it's got the loop, but it actually doesn't do anything. And I'm just going to prove to you now that it doesn't really make much difference whether these comments are here or not. So if I just hit verify, which will actually do a compile, I do that now, it's going to compile a sketch and it will tell me how big it is. So it's 466 bytes out of a total of 32,256. Okay. Now, if I comment, sorry, if I delete all of this, um, these comments, 
so that there is nothing left. All right, so that's all the functions I had down low are gone. There's my empty loop now. There's my empty setup. I'll make sure I don't even have empty any empty lines in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out all of this as well. All right, so I'm just going to delete that. I'm not going to save any of this because I really do not want to... Um... Okay, so now you can see there's nothing in here now except for those two basic things. Now if I recompile this now, all right, you'll see that it's exactly the same size. All right, 466 bytes again. So it makes absolutely no difference having comments in. So don't feel like you can't put comments in because you're worried about taking up space. It doesn't. All right, just going to re reload this. I don't want to save what I got rid of there. So you can see all of this comments, all of this commented out code, it takes no space. All right, now it's not always good to leave commented out code because it can get confusing later on. If you're trying to debug some programs, you comment a bit out, and then later on you save it and you compile it and you run it and you deploy it, and it's like, oh, why is that not working? You go in and you see a bunch of different pieces of code that's been commented out. It's not easy necessarily to figure out which piece should be commented out and which piece shouldn't. So in the next lesson, I will show you a better way of removing functionality when you don't want it without actually having to comment it out because it's always a good practice to literally delete the code that you do not use for the sketch because it will take up space or it will cause confusion if you simply comment it out and you forget later on why you commented it out. So empty sketch, 466 bytes, we haven't even done anything. You have 32K, you've now taken a bunch of it out. So let's just complete this one and we'll go on to lesson one, which is reading from the serial port. Now, it's not your basic, absolute basic lesson. This is a little bit more advanced reading from the serial port, but I do keep it simple, so you should be able to follow on. Hope that first part was interesting. Let's move on to lesson one.